On behalf of the Township Board, I'd like to welcome everybody to our third State of the Township. And we have some real special guests with us this morning, this afternoon. We have Brownies Girl Scout Troop number 40596. They're going to be, they're going to actually be doing the pledge themselves. Uh, when they get over here by the flag, we're going to have them come over. And they're also going to do something special for us today. They're also going to sign it for us. So again, uh, whenever you guys are ready, uh, if, if against the audience would stand, but we're going to uh, let the, the brownies do their thing here this morning, and we're so glad that you're here. This is a special day for us today. Uh, it is a celebration of our 180th birthday. In January of 1837, Michigan became the 26th state to join the Union. Heartland Township, with a population of just over 400 people at the time, officially became a township. Uh, right around that same time, we became a state. Today, we celebrate that anniversary, and in the spirit of cooperation that our early settlers were known for. We might not be raising barns or, or with our neighbors, but we are partnering and getting together to know other organizations better on a weekly basis to make Heartland and strengthen our community. There's some special people today. Uh, Senator Joe Hewn is with us today. Thanks for coming. Uh, State Representative Hank Valpell. I haven't seen Hank yet. You here? Where? Oh, I'm sorry. Welcome. Uh, we have uh, Joseph is it Riker for Congressman Mike Bishop. Thank you for showing up today. Uh, Heartland Township Board of Trustees, thank you for all being here today as well. The Heartland Consolidated School Board is with us today. The Heartland Area Chamber of Commerce is with us today. Also the Cromain Library Board of Trustees. The Heartland Deerfield Fire Authority, I saw Adam Carroll earlier. Adam, thank you. The Livingston County Sheriff's Department. Sheriff Murphy, Murphy is with us today, thank you. Along with uh, another one of our great partners, the Livingston County Road Commission. Thank you for all helping us celebrate our 180th anniversary today. The first part of our presentation is gonna be talking about the beauty of our community. We all talk about how rural we are and just what a great place it is to live. But we're gonna to start today with the three winners of the first Heartland's Friend by the Nature photo contest. Uh, this is the first year we've done this. And this is Jean, by the way. Jean is the one that uh, helped put this all together. And we, out of all 80, we selected three photo contest winners this year. This one is by Rachel Apold. She could not be here with us today. But uh, for cat lovers, this is Brenna Geddes. Brenna, um, this is a beautiful picture. Does anybody know where, where that is? Go ahead. It's uh, by Round Lake. In, on Lakina Drive. So there's a special place in my heart with that picture. It basically is what we get to watch every evening because it's right around the corner from us. So that's a really cool picture. Uh, beautifully done. Uh, and so that's Round Lake. And then we have Catherine Savella. Correct. Catherine, thank you for being here today. Thank you. And would you like to briefly explain uh, where your picture was taken? Um, this is our house on Mill Street. I know a lot of people are familiar with it. We get a lot of um, people stopping by and saying hello, it's kind of popular, and we're very happy to be here. We've been here about two and a half years now. Well, that's absolutely beautiful. How about a round of applause for the <laughs> photography winners? Thank you so much. So again, this is the first part of our presentation. It is a beautiful place, how we live here, and we have a short video to expound on some of the great summer activities that we have in our community. Heritage Park is an amazing facility. It's continued to grow, uh, not just community members coming to the park, but grow physically. And the youth sport programs are 
top-notch amazing compared to other community fields we have been told that our heritage park is a great place to come to other other programs want to come and play sports there Harlan Township is just a fantastic place to live. Our lakes are clean. We have lake boards on all of our lakes. We continually try to keep them clean and weed free. We think it's important to keep some green space for Heartland Township. We are growing and people want a place to go that they can relax, take their kids and enjoy nature. Heartland does have a good balance between the lakes, the parks, the things for the community members to do, um, the walking paths. There's always something to do outside for sure. This year we're really focusing on offering more science, technology, engineering, and math focused programs in addition to, of course, literacy based things. We are a library. A lot of what we offer here is great for giving kids the opportunity to not slide in the summer. We offer our summer reading club which allows kids to record how many minutes they read throughout the summer and we give them incentives to make sure they keep reading throughout the summer. Being a part of the Heartland community and being a pillar here in the community is something that we value because we love this community. It's a very friendly, great, warm place to be and we want to make sure that we're providing that pillar here through the library, that we're doing that with our programs. Farmers Market was started back in 2004 as a collaborative effort between the Heartland Chamber, the 4-H Rangers, and the Township. We ended up now in front of Rural King, which is an awesome spot. It's grown to be a fantastic market with such a variety of things offered, jellies and jams. We have several kinds of meats, produce, flowers, crafts. I just can't name everything. It's an exciting place to be on Saturdays. Heartland Polo Classic was a partnership with the Detroit Polo Club, who happens to be right in Heartland's backyard. Seeing everyone happy and the smiles and the food and seeing these majestic horses play polo right in front of you and I think it was just the, the feel and I think it really made people happy. It was something different. They got a chance to get dressed up and go see something really unique and fun. We offer so much for family and community to be here that that friendly by nature rings true in everything that we do here in Heartland. There's no better place to be in the summertime than Heartland. That's just a small flavor of uh, the opportunities that we have here in our community and uh, we also are a you know we're clearly a great place to live work and play but greatness just doesn't come along. Uh, we're going back to the Heartland area project roots and we're starting a new program called Partners in Progress. This includes the Heartland Consolidated Schools, Cremain Library, the township itself, and our Chamber of Commerce. So with that, we have another video that will further explain where we're headed. Partners in Progress is a collaborative working relationship between the Heartland Area Chamber of Commerce, Heartland Consolidated Schools, Cremain Library, and Heartland Township. Influenced by the Heartland Area Project of the 1930s, Partners in Progress embodies John Robert Krauss Sr.'s emphasis on the necessity of cooperation to effect positive change. The four partners are working toward a shared vision of Heartland living to attract new businesses and families to the area and to refine what makes Heartland the place to call home. New residential and business developments have helped the existing local businesses feel the upturn in the economy. Heartland is situated at the hearty meat and potatoes intersection of M59 and US 23. The intersection attracts business and the village area with its library, concert events, schools and parks attract families. Both are necessary for progress and growth. The chamber realized the need to be able to offer more services to its members and hosted the Heartland Polo Classic fundraiser this summer with promotion from Partners in Progress. The fundraiser benefited Heartland Chambers Scholarship Fund and Community Givebacks. Importantly, 
It was also an opportunity to shine a light on the value that the Chamber of Commerce brings to local businesses through its networking, educational access, and support services. Teaming with Partners in Progress will help the Chamber encourage local commerce within the community while reinforcing the best ways for families to live, work, and play in Heartland. The area's professional, academic, and historical influence makes the Heartland Consolidated School System a top priority for area parents, contributing to high student evaluations from the state and making Heartland Schools a popular school district of choice for the surrounding towns. However, even more than being a school district of choice, Heartland needs to be a community of choice to maintain the educational standards that Heartland residents have come to expect. And creating a premier district requires cooperation, collaboration, and a focused team approach. Heartland Consolidated Schools educate the whole child with early intervention available to every student, not just a certain population of special needs or economically disadvantaged students. In Heartland, the whole child is every child, which is evident in the test scores of all student groups and on the success of early childhood education and reading recovery programs. The school system stems from the Heartland Area Project, a unique social venture headed by wealthy local J. Robert Krauss beginning in 1930. The Heartland Area Project emphasized community growth, improvement, and leadership, and was responsible for the Heartland tradition of fine rural schools and the creation of Heartland's cultural center, Cromaine Library. Cromaine Library's focus is on who it is serving and on the community it is a part of, while becoming far more mindful of the needs of Heartland residents. Everything Cromain Library has accomplished this year has been based on the question, is this working for our patrons? The library recently revamped their website, using this question and new mindset to reach residents who are not library users. The library is no longer a warehouse of books, but a collection of experts, and Cromain is working hard to increase its options to become part of its patrons' daily lives. The library understands that digital services have become an important part of what Heartland residents of all ages are looking for, and the library is continually evaluating patron-friendly digital products and expanding their online resources. With the completion of Cromain Library's construction project, which coincided with its 90th anniversary, the building has more meeting and study space to offer. The library's board of directors has been planning and saving for this expansion since 1997, and they are proud to be able to say construction was accomplished free of loans. As a cultural pillar of Partners in Progress, Cromaine Library will continue its history of collaboration and look to achieve meaningful growth for its community. Heartland Township enjoys the small town feel of a rural community that just happens to have convenient, big city access to Ann Arbor, Lansing, and Detroit. The township's location, schools, and beautiful setting makes Heartland a desirable community. But the township's board of trustees understand that, to protect the township character that residents appreciate, managing smart growth is a first priority. Heartland welcomed new subdivisions and new businesses in 2017, and completed several projects to enhance its parks and roads. Heartland is enriching its sense of place and the quality of life for its residents, and the investment in our community will pay dividends for years to come. Much of what the township has accomplished over the years can be attributed to its many local partners, whether it's a youth sports organization or our Livingston County officials. The township participates in rich conversations with its partners in progress at the schools, chamber of commerce, and library. And the partners' shared vision and enthusiasm help develop the future of our great community. Township Hall is dedicated to providing customer service and to earning the trust of its residents. Staff members are professional experts in their fields and feel a great deal of responsibility to township taxpayers. Strategic planning continues to grow in importance, and the Board of Trustees have created a document to guide Heartland through 2022. The Township is making careful development decisions to preserve Heartland's outdoor living allure, while also providing citizens with premium services. 
a delicate balance that entails the need for plenty of J. Robert Krause's original cooperative spirit. You kind of feel a theme of what we're trying to get across today. It's not just Heartland Township that makes this community what it is. It's all of our partners in progress and all the individuals that are in this room and in our community that make it special and a special place to live. And we just recently had about a 30 person meeting to, uh, with our partners in progress last week. About 30 people showed up and there was a, a, a saying I think that maybe came from the schools that talked about being thoughtful and deliberate. deliberate. And I think those are two key words that we're going to use in our organization as we go forward to, to bond even tighter and make, uh, make our future uh, just unbelievably good uh, for, our, for our kids that live here today and into the future. So now we kind of go back into some of the status of uh, what the township is and we'll start with our road initiatives. Uh, we're wrapping up our major projects this year. We completed the pavement of Bergen Road and Heartland Road in the village. We also did a, an additional large drainage project in the village along with additional parking. And we are pleased to say, uh, and on behalf of our board, that all of the projects that we've done so far are below budget. And we will continue to uh, criticize and critique all those projects as you come forward to make sure we're getting our best uh, bang for the dollar. And uh, we're about just uh, approaching halfway through our millage. Uh, park update. We, uh, I think it was stated in one of the um, uh, videos, uh, we had uh, some real good progress this year. We have built pavilions both at Settlers Park and at Heritage Park. And if you look over here to the right, although they're a little bit small, uh, you can see this gizmo. And if you're sitting in the back, it's not a spaceship. It's actually a playscape. Uh, that one is at Heritage Park, right next to the pavilion. The Township Board has already purchased these. They are in storage for this upcoming winter. And they will be, uh, both of these playgrounds will be uh, installed here in the spring. The one over here, is going to be right behind the township hall here. This is Settlers Park, right next to the pavilion. And that one's going to be uh, a little bit uh, more complex. It's going to be for more age groups. Uh, I believe, you know, uh, grade school tots all the way up through teens. It's got swing sets, it's got some slides, and et cetera. So we really think that this is going to be an added benefit to our community. And uh, that, that'll be opening here again in the spring. One other element that we added on here too is, is we just approved a mountain bike path. We have an organization here locally that likes to mountain bike. I'm not sure if anybody does here in this room, but it's going to be more like a, a, a beginner's uh, type of situation. Um, that's going to get launched here, uh, if not this fall, first thing in the spring. We'd also like to do a little shout out to our partners. We would not be able to have the park we have at Heritage Park without the special people that I'm going to uh, announce right now. We have Haya. Community Soccer, Heartland Community Ed, and Heartland Lacrosse. And without those folks, those fields would not even look close to what they do today. So I'd like to thank you for their partnership. Thank you. Uh, some of our infrastructure elements, uh, our water is obviously important to us as it is to all of our neighbors. Uh, we do an excellent job uh, running our water plant. Our goal is to make sure that we have clean potable water uh, forever here in Heartland. And on our septage receiving station, which opened uh, about 10 years ago, we have treated over 50 million gallons of raw sewage that would have, if we didn't have that system in place, would be uh, applied to our ground. So when you start thinking about those little pieces as we go forward to the headwater to the Shiawassee and headwater to the Huron Rivers, uh, we take great pride in that we have a system now to get, the, get that stuff off the ground and treated and sent up to uh, Genesee County. So that's a wonderful thing that we've done here in the, as our community. From a planning and development perspective, we have a lot of new res residential construction that just started this year, but I was speaking with our planner director, uh, Troy Langer, earlier before this meeting. We have a lot coming down the pipe here next year. Uh, two construction elements with this, this year is Walnut Ridge, a residential subdivision behind 242 Church, and also Fiddler Grove, which is a condominium subdivision, which is on M59, uh, right, uh, right to the east of town, or west of town. Planning and development when it comes to commercial, uh, as, as we have seen a lot of activity along the 59 corridor, we are pleased to 
uh, announced this year that we had several de developments open, including Mug and Bops, which is right down here on Clark Road, Speedway Gas Station, Jellison CPA moved into the, the village, and Rural King all opened this year in our community. Under construction, if you're wondering what's happening right next to Tim Hortons, that's a Culver's, which is going to open, they said maybe, as soon as uh, Christmas time. And we also have Wayne Homes, uh, which is a model home, which is on the location of M59. Uh, on tap for next year that we know of for sure right now is Imagine Theater. Imagine decided to delay the uh, construction project until the spring of 2018 because of weather conditions. We have Ben Franklin and Mr. Sparky. You may have heard their uh, advertisements on WHMI. Uh, they're a local community. They are moving here to uh, the old 23 corridor. Uh, the Dairy Queen and Food Town uh, developments, they are going to get redeveloped in 2018. And that's probably just maybe the tip of the iceberg of what we're going to see. So uh, we are a desirable place for uh, commercial business and we continue to grow and thrive and uh, we look for a really exciting feature or future in that area. When it comes to town, township finances, uh, the township is financially healthy with a very strong budgetary performance with an operating reserve in the general fund. So why is our operating reserve important? Well, when we talk about the parks and our sidewalks and the different things that we put into our community, we do not have a tax a millage, per se, for that type of thing. We do everything we can to run the, the township in the best of its ability, and we use those reserve dollars to put those funds back into our parks and our sidewalks and et cetera. So that's why they're important to all of us. And right now we have a double-A uh, positive outlook by S&P Global Ratings for 2017. So at this point, the township is in a very good, excellent financial state. But you know what money can't buy? Do you know what money can't buy? Money can't, can't buy the dedication of our residents. And we are very lucky to have this year, we have seven people that were nominated for Volunteer of the Year. And I'd like to not, or share there, if you're here, please stand up. Uh, Dennis Brewer, Larry Shofu, Kristen Moore, Danielle Pop, Kurt Stromland, Barbara Walker, and Jennifer Whitbeck. So thank you all for being here. But unfortunately, only one of those people can be our Volunteer of the Year. So it is with great joy to introduce Kurt Stromland as the winner of the 2018 <laughs> Friendly by Nature. The three words that best describe Kurt are helpful, kind, and genuine. By the amount of things that Kurt is involved with, I can tell that he has a, a love and passion for his children, for the community. I first met Kurt a few years ago at one of our Chamber of Commerce meetings. He started coming as a part of his effort of getting the Lions Club here in Heartland uh, back to life. Oh, I serve as the president of the Heartland Lions Club. One of the things we did at, for our centennial, we donated a defibrillator to another nonprofit organization in Livingston County. We also have a, a Leo's Club for 12 to 18 year olds, which is the same as the Lions Club. They're gonna do community service projects with us. I think it's important for communities like Heartland to have a program like HIA just for the kids to have an avenue to enjoy their passion, play baseball, be with their friends. I think it would be difficult for a sports program to flourish without volunteers like Kurt. Very proud to coach this group of boys and very happy with what they did and it's fun to watch the boys from when you start to when you finish. We uh, just played this fall. We went 11-0-1 and at the playoffs we finished with the, shutting out the team we was playing. So we had a perfect record. Kurt is very encouraging as a coach. He always seems very genuinely excited to see the boys on the field. 
He doesn't let them get down. He's always he has, has positive things to say. Coach, he really motivates the team and he's really good at um, making sure people are on their feet watching the game. As a team, we improved definitely from the first game to the last game. We worked better as a team towards the end of the season. Over the last season, I've learned a lot to get to know new people and he's really, he's a great coach because he, he really motivates us and he's just a great guy. Because uh, Kurt gives so much as a volunteer, uh, it, it adds tremendous value to our community. That's uh, something that's been a focus of ours for many years that uh, we are a community that is volunteers and that there's so much of the good things that happen here that rely on the hard work of volunteers. I think Coach deserves this award because he's an all-around great person. He motivates people to do better. He has so many um, programs that he, he does to make the community a better place. You know, Heartland Township's a good township to live in, and it's very important that we keep it that way, and we all have our important things we can do to make it worthwhile. Winning the award was just a plus. I don't, I don't do it for the, for the award, but it's nice to be recognized because I enjoy doing what I'm doing for the community. You. So we do have a proclamation here on behalf of the township, and I just, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but we'd like to thank you, Kurt, for your strong and great leadership and roles with the Heartland Lions Club, Heartland Leo Club, Salvation Army, the Heartland Chamber of Commerce, and the Heartland Area Youth Athletic Association with baseball. Congratulations. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Well, that concludes our former formal portion of our meeting today. And just a thank you for all coming out. And we have something special in the back room who would like to have a cupcake to celebrate. Everybody raise your hand. I've got one up in front, yep. But uh, on behalf of the Board of Directors and our wonderful community, thank you for coming and showing your support for us today. Uh, we will be around to answer questions that you may have. Uh, feel free to email us. Uh, but again, from our great staff here in our community, uh, thank you and God bless.